garden. The weather can't make up its mind. It, it does look like a nice day today, but there is a fierce wind. So apologies for any rattling of the greenhouse here. I hope we're not gonna blow away. The weather has not been very kind to us over the last few weeks, but hopefully things will improve soon. But anyway, I am sowing today and I've got one thing in particular that is quite urgent to start now and that's my cucumbers. So most of the time I'm growing old open pollinated varieties. It's always my preference to have old varieties in the garden. It's just something that interests me and, and that's what I like to grow. So last year I had the old classic telegraph in the greenhouses. It's a very productive cucumber when it gets going, but it is a little bit of a pain because you have to go over those old fashioned glasshouse cucumbers and pick off all of the male flowers. And if you don't, there's a chance that your cucumber could turn out a little bit bitter. That's not what you want. And of course, it will turn out rather seedy. I was a bit lax with that last year and we didn't have any bitter fruit. Um, I don't remember that ever actually happening. I mean, it can do, but it's not something that we have a problem with, but we did have seedy fruit, of course. And I don't want to be bothered with pinching off all those male flowers this year. So I'm going to break with tradition and I'm going to grow a hybrid this year. Now they can occasionally produce male flowers, but generally speaking, these are so-called all female hybrid so most of the flowers and if, if they're not stressed then most of those flowers will be females and you don't have to muck about with them so I have very little experience with hybrid varieties this one appears to be well regarded this is Carmen I shall try that this year and see how it goes I also want to start the summer squash right now I'm going to leave the winter squash and the melons for at least one more week maybe two weeks i found that an early sowing of those doesn't necessarily perform that well i think a slightly later sowing so that they're planted out when conditions are a little bit more favorable that always seems to do better so sometimes I've actually done two different sowings and, and it's the latter one that's always performed better for us. So I think I will leave that for another week or two. But the summer squash, I always want to get going reasonably early. I want quite good sized plants before I put them in the garden and I'd be very happy to get a fairly early harvest off of these. So I've got three sorts I'm growing. Same courgette as last year, Striato di Napoli because I've got lots of seed of it. I've been having trouble with old seed this season, but I will sow plenty of it and hopefully that will germinate. And also this funky fella, Tromba del Benga. So this weird curved squash. This one I used as a summer squash last year. Now you can keep the fruit into the winter and then they, the skin goes a little bit like a, a butternut, sort of beige color and toughens up a little bit um, but this makes a really great summer squash now this is more closely related to the butternut than it is to the courgette the flesh is a little bit firmer it's it's not a, it's not it's not hard during the summer but it's got slightly firmer flesh than a courgette these are really quite nice fruits so i want a few of those again I like that. It's, it's great. And that, so that comes from Albenga. That's in Liguria, northern Italy. In fact, the, the north of Italy is well known for the courgettes and um, summer squash. So that is a great one. And then I've got some old seed of a yellow crookneck squash. So there are crookneck squashes that are summer squash and others that are winter squash. And uh, this is one of the summer squashes. I'm trying to remember if, if I've got a smooth or knobbly skin sort here. Time will tell. I really can't remember exactly what I bought here, but I, I think this is one of the yellow ones. So 
I'll have a couple of those as well. I started some peas in a couple of lengths of gutter. Germination was a little bit rubbish with those, but I will have to do some more of those later. But what I want to start today are my tall growing peas. So I've got two varieties here. One is Alderman. That's the same that I grew last year. It's a really nice pea. Even though the pods are quite big and the peas are quite big, but they, they have fantastic pea flavour and plenty enough sweetness to them to be very nice indeed. Alderman is great. It will crop over. It, it's really tall. I mean, it will grow. It will easily do eight feet. So you need a tall structure for it to scramble up. But it will crop over quite a long length of that stem there and and it is really very productive um i think for the first time last year we actually froze lots of peas and and that was because of the productivity of the alderman peas i'm only going to grow half of those this year because on the other side of the frame i'm going to put carabi de moussan now i've grown this before and, and this is fantastic again it's tall growing I think not quite so tall perhaps as the Alderman, but it, it does get tall. So I think I will put those on the other side of the whatever framework I put up for the uh, Alderman piece. I'll have Alderman on one side, the uh, Caribbean de Moussan on the other. Now that one is, uh, I've only grown that on shorter frames before and it, it does get to the top and flop about a bit. So I'll try to avoid that this year. But it is a Monge too and it is fantastic for, I think, at least three reasons. First of all, the flowers are absolutely beautiful. They're, they're a stunning pea flower. Now, the pea, all the pea flowers are, are quite attractive anyway, but, but this one is particularly so. Then the pods are huge. For a monge too, they're absolutely enormous. And, and even if they get a little bit older than they ought to, so if if you find a couple of older pods where normally you'd think, oh, you've got to throw that away, it'll be stringy and unpleasant. They're still really very nice. And the flavor is fantastic. It is a superb Monge 2. I, I don't bother with any other sorts of Monge 2 here because that one is just so fantastic. I don't always grow Monge 2. I didn't do it last year, but I, I want some this year. What we might do is use the mange to fresh and then keep the peas and freeze them. And then the final thing, just for a giggle, this is by no means for a serious crop. I've got some peanuts. Um, that, 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 that's pretty marginal here, but hopefully I can find some space under cover to put a few of those in. And they have a very interesting reproductive habit. So. I mean, it's a legume like peas and beans, but they, after they flowered, if they're pollinated, then this, this little stem grows out from the center of the flower. It's called the peg and it, it hangs down and this stem grows down and it has to get down to the soil. If it doesn't get down to the soil, you don't get any peanuts, but assuming it gets down to the soil, it will then grow those nuts underground. That's why they're called ground nuts. Of course, they're not a nut at all, but that's an entirely different matter. Lots of the things we call nuts are not nuts. Lots of the things we call berries are not berries. <laughs> it's just, just one of those things. As gardeners, we use all the wrong words, but who cares? Anyway, that's the game for today. Cucumbers, summer squash, peas, and some peanuts, if I'm lucky. So I'm going to start my cucumbers and squash in little pots. Given where we are in the season, the cucumbers may or may not be potted on. It all depends what happens with the, the weather, and most, mostly with the temperatures under cover. I suspect I will need to pot these on but we'll see what happens so I'll give that a bit of a soak 
It's a very light compost mix. You do not want anything with the squash and the cucumbers that's going to uh, retain too much moisture. They are a little bit prone to rots. So the hybrid cucumber is fresh seed. I've got five here and hopefully I'll get three plants from that. I would think so. Um, I'm going to pop one seed in each pot and I will try and put it on its side. So I'll just push that down in the center. Now this compost is very light and I haven't firmed it down at all so I'm not really compressing it by doing that. And then I will just top up with a little bit of extra compost. I will probably give that just another splash of water. There we go. So for the courgettes, I probably only want two plants. I'm going to sow three pots, but this is old seed, so I'm going to put three in each pot and I'm pretty sure at least one of each will germinate. And that's a really nice variety, that one. We tend to take them, or we try to take them when they're quite small, but actually, even if you leave the fruit to get the size of rather large marrows, they are still quite well flavoured. So exactly the same for the yellow crookneck. This seed packet hadn't been opened, but it's, it's not fresh, so I'm just going to be cautious and sow three per pot. This is not something where I, I really want to re-sow. And again, I'm, I'm sowing them on their edges because, well, that's the traditional way to do it. And the idea is that if you water from above, the water doesn't sit on a, the flat of the seed. It, it will drain off nicely. Of course, if you're watering from below, it doesn't really make any difference. I don't know how important that point is, but that's the way I've always done them. So I want to make sure that these pots are nicely hydrated when I sow them. You've got to rehydrate the seed casings there, but I will be a little bit careful afterwards. Now this compost is really well draining, so it shouldn't have any problems. So the last of my cuca bits here is the Tromba del Benga. And again, old seed, I'm sowing three per pot. I'm going to start the peas in these fairly deep cell trays and I do have another one where the cells are, are bigger and, and deeper. But I think this one is absolutely fine for the peas. I use the other ones particularly for um, broad beans, French beans, uh, sweet corn, stuff like that where they could really use that extra depth for the roots. The peas should be quite happy in these. I've used these for peas before and I think they're fine. I probably just need one tray of each. I might sow a third tray half and half, but yeah, these should be fine. So first I will just fill that with compost quite loosely to start with. This really is very light stuff. Brush the junk off the top. Now the compost has been sieved but of course 
small bits of junk go through the sieve and then I can push these down a little bit and that should give me the right sort of depth to sew the peas. I'll start with Alderman and I'm going to drop I think three peas in each cell. Two would probably be fine. But my last bunch of peas did not germinate too well so I'm going to drop three in there. And I'm not going to thin these out, I will leave all three plants in if they germinate. Plant them out in little clusters, it's perfectly alright. Peas don't seem to mind. These don't need any warmth to germinate really. I will put them in the polytunnel though, on the hanging shelf out of the reach of critters that might otherwise like to eat our peas. Right, and then I'll just top that up. Give that a really good soak. Of course you can soak the peas themselves before sowing. I don't I don't do it, but I know I know some gardeners do. But I will make sure that this compost is properly moistened. So the last thing on the list is the peanuts. I'm going to start those in. An ordinary cell tray. These aren't especially deep, but they are—they are big cells. There's quite a volume of soil in these. I think these will be fine. I'll try and get these out without damaging them. I don't really know much about growing these things. They really want warmer conditions than we have here. But I understand that these should be planted with the slightly pointy bit down. I'll just set that into the soil there. I wonder if I should use a bigger tray. Hmm. Yeah, now I don't know what to do. No, I've changed my mind. I'm going to put them in the deeper cells, so you've got more room for the roots there. Right, I think that's better. I'm, I'm having to push these down a reasonable depth, so I think they would appreciate the deeper soil in these trays. So I'll just cover that and then give this a good soak as well and I can put that in the same place as the peas, out of the reach of any pests. That's me all caught up with the sowing for now, but of course there's lots to do in April. I will want to get the parsnips underway fairly soon, maybe next week, and I will station sow those direct of course. Um, then there will be the winter squash and the melons in a week or two, and of course then we've got things like the, the French beans and not long after the sweet corn. So yeah, there's plenty of stuff to sow in the near future but that is all for this video thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now <laughs>